Hey everyone, welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. In the Mobile User Acquisition Show, we feature interviews with the smartest folks in mobile and growth who share invaluable, actionable, tactical insights on every aspect of mobile growth and marketing, not to mention some adjacent areas just as well. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is presented by me, Shaman Rao, CEO of the mobile growth marketing firm Rocketship HQ, and produced by Karishma Sundaram, our superstar content marketing manager at Rocketship HQ. Each episode includes strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile growth marketing that you can use to unlock tremendous growth for your app in a sustainable and capital-efficient manner. We talked a few weeks ago about how there is a trade-off between retention and monetization. We talked about a mini case study, and I shared the example of a word game that I worked on a few years ago, in which we saw that when we reduced monetization barriers by making daily puzzles completely free, that led to a huge boost in retention that more than made up for the immediate drop in monetization. But as it turns out, the trade-off between monetization and retention is not always the same. One of the pieces of feedback that we got about that last episode was from somebody that worked on a leading mastery game. And this piece of feedback was that sometimes you can see the opposite relationship between monetization and retention. How is that? For instance, a game in which users are not very highly invested are not going to retain very well. So you could lower your monetization barriers to the point where there's almost no investment of time or effort and money by the users. The game is so easy for the users that they almost don't care. And as you can imagine, that translates into very poor retention and engagement. And as you can imagine, retention of users who are invested in the game far outweighs the retention of users who are not as invested. And then oftentimes the non-investment is just can be attained very, very easily by lowering the monetization barriers to a point where the game is practically free and so easy to play that there's just no barrier or no friction. The moment a user makes one purchase, even if it's a small microtransaction, a 99 cent purchase, that helps them get invested. So they want to engage much, much more with the game just because they're invested to that point. Oftentimes it makes sense to add that level of friction, which we like to call good friction, to an onboarding flow or the early experience of a game or an app to make sure that users are engaged and much more likely to retain. And the clearest way to introduce that sort of friction is to have some microtransaction or some monetization hurdle for a user to overcome in their early user flow. So the takeaway here is that the interplay between retention and monetization is nuanced. There are cases when lowering the monetization barriers leads to much stronger retention, but there certainly are occasions when you want to have the good sort of friction by adding a monetization barrier early on in the game to improve your retention. All of this is very, very much dependent on the specifics of the game itself. As they say, your mileage may vary. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog.